Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about the continuing global stock market crash. If you are worried about this bear market or just want to see what I'm trading and how I'm thinking about it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So basically we have a stock market crash that's accelerating. Uh, the S&P futures were actually halted overnight because they were down more than 5%. They were halted right at 5%. And then this morning, we actually had a halt on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the circuit breakers kicked in because the S&P 500 was down 7%. Now, this is being driven by two main drivers, which are a huge fall in the price of crude oil and, of course, the coronavirus, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Crude oil is, is falling because a pact between Saudi Arabia and Russia fell apart. It looks like Saudi Arabia is now going to be uh, pumping a huge amount of oil and this is a game of chicken that Saudi Arabia can definitely win because their cost of production of oil is much, much lower than Russia, which is still very dependent on oil revenues. As a result, we're seeing Russian stocks down uh, just a gigantic amount. You can follow this if you look at RSX is the ETF down 17 and percent just today. Uh, just an enormous, enormous move. We're also seeing lots of cracks in the energy complex in the U.S., all the, the major uh, oil producers. You can look at XLE, which includes, of course, Chevron, ExxonMobil, which I've warned warned you about as being a very dangerous company that's, that's on the end. Uh, this ETF down almost 20%, which is just unheard of for a large ETF. And the financial sector is also showing obvious signs of strains as, as rates come down a lot. Um, XLF is the way to follow this. It's the ETF for the financial index down over 11%. Now the Fed is trying to hold stuff together by doing rate cuts like they did last week. They're probably going to cut another half a percentage point at their next meeting, if not sooner. They're also uh, increasing overnight repo operations. In other words, they're printing money and uh, but it doesn't seem to be some doesn't seem to be helping yet. And as a result, we have a lot of companies that have a lot of debt like uh, AT&T, Ford, General Motors, uh, Exxon Mobil, just just plunging off a cliff. Uh, this is uh, we haven't really seen moves like this since the uh, financial uh, crisis of 2008, 2009, and especially high yield uh, companies getting hit. If you want to look at the high yield bond index, it's HYG. And uh, this is down 5%. Enormous. You can see just on the chart here what an enormous move that is for a bond index. We're back to where we were in the uh, fourth quarter of 2008. Uh, so what's happening is the markets are pricing in, certainly pricing in uh, a recession at this point, uh, and then possibly uh, on the way to pricing in a depression. So the real problem that we're we're seeing is that the global economy is seizing up. We're having to ground flights, uh, close airports, uh, lay off flight attendants and pilots and longshoremen because there are no containers coming from China. And of course, all the world's manufacturing or a huge majority of it is in China and everything is just in this in this holding pattern. So what the market is pricing in, it's beginning to price in these sort of job losses, a uh, huge spike in medical bills, from coronavirus. Uh, so what is the state of the coronavirus? Well, the one thing we do know is that it has been basically spreading unchecked in the US. And uh, if you look at this uh, website from, uh, I like this uh, map from Johns Hopkins, you can see that we're only at 600 cases in the US, but this is more uh, the result of not having enough testing kits for whatever reason. And so, uh, what we can be pretty certain of is this is a highly infectious virus. It has been basically unchecked in the U.S. for the last few weeks. And there are numerous reports of travelers coming back from Asia or Saudi Arabia or Italy or other places, even going to their doctors and being turned away and going back out in the public with coronavirus. And so uh, I would say the U.S. has done a, a much worse job in many ways than, than even China uh, it looks like South Korea did a, did a pretty good job. Of course, they're a much uh, smaller country. Uh, but I, what I'm expecting is to see, as we get more testing done, uh, I'm expecting to see this um, the number of cases of coronavirus in the U.S. to hugely spike in the coming weeks. 
Now we haven't we haven't closed the airports. We haven't closed the schools. These are the main uh, ways that viruses spread. Uh, obviously, especially through schools. I'm going to link to a. Uh, some schools have have done the right thing. Stanford has canceled classes. I believe the University of Washington. A bunch of schools are closing. Uh, I'm going to link to a very interesting uh, tweet by Liz Specht, where she goes through these numbers. I'm not going to do it right now, but one of the big problems for the U.S. health system, uh, healthcare system, is that we just are underprepared for a case like this. We only have so many respirators. We only have so many hospital beds. Uh, so she estimates there are only about 330,000 hospital beds available nationwide at this time of year, uh, given the regular flu, not to mention the coronavirus. And so if you, if you can look at her numbers and adjust them how you want, but she's estimating that we basically run out of hospital beds by late April or early May. And it seems that people who do get coronavirus uh, and the percentage, percentage of them that need to be hospitalized, particularly people over the age of 50 with cr chronic health problems, uh, when they do go to the hospital, they spend a few weeks there. So it's not really in and out. Uh, and many of them do not make it out, unfortunately. So this is a very grim situation. And what it's doing is it's basically causing the whole global economy to seize up. Conferences are being canceled. People are canceling travel. Uh, employees are working from home. Uh, deals and new sales are just not getting done. And so what we're seeing is just a huge puking out of assets, especially by uh, retail investors, hedge funds, just everyone getting margin calls. And um, so if we are going to get a, I've been getting a lot of emails and questions from you guys, you know, should I buy, should I buy? Now, obviously I don't offer, I don't offer um, investment advi advice but I think the problem now is this has just gone too far. Uh, and so even if we were able to solve the virus problem quickly, there's been a huge amount of uh, damage to the global economy. You can't just have an economy. It's like driving a car at 90 miles an hour and stopping, trying to hit the brakes immediately. It causes a lot of problems. And so we're seeing these cracks in financials, in the energy complex, in all the stock market indices. Uh, in sort of weaker, uh, weaker countries and weaker currencies. And so if we're, if we're thinking about how far this can go, a, and we'll just look at the Dow, it's not really the best. I like to look at the S&P 500, but the Dow is maybe a better way to visualize it. So the previous high on the Dow was February 12th, and this is actually one of the fastest moves we've ever seen. I think it is the fastest move uh, maybe since the Great Depression from an all-time high in the stock market to, I'm sorry, from a 52-week high or all-time high to a new 52-week low. So we've moved, we were very close to 30,000, we've bounced off, and now we're closer to 24,000. In a real deep recession, uh, stocks typically fall 40 to 50%. So a target for the Dow, if we get that sort of recession, would be about 15,000 on the Dow which is still, uh, call it 12,000, uh, um, no, I'm sorry, call it 8,000 uh, points below here, eight or 9,000 points below here. So I personally think it's too easy to try to buy this dip. We probably get a bounce, uh, but I think this is gonna be a multi-month, if not multi-year mess to clean up. Now, what's the one thing that could stop stocks from falling this much? Well, we could have central banks not just print money to buy bonds, uh, not just print money to buy mortgage backs, but maybe print money to actually buy stocks. Or they may tell the banks to just go out and start buying stocks. This actually happened during the Asian economic crisis. I know someone who was working in one of the major US banks then, they basically got a call over the phone from the Fed saying, go buy stocks, we've got you covered. Something like that could happen. Uh, I think combined with some sort of fiscal stimulus. So Hong Kong has already been just dist distributing free money to uh, Hong Kong citizens. They've given out 10,000 Hong Kong dollars, which is I think about $1,200 uh, US to every citizen. And I would expect to start seeing that sort of fiscal, um, fiscal stimulus from the US government as well. Uh, certainly uh, tax credits, maybe a delay on tax returns, and maybe just sending a check to everyone. I know we did this in 2001 after 9-11. I believe George W. Bush sent out checks for a couple hundred dollars to, to most, pe most people. 
Obama did something similar, I want to say in 2010 or 2011. But I think the only response at this point, uh, we have, you know, the tenure note at half a percentage, 50 bips. Uh, we have all the interest rates headed towards zero. And so the only thing that central banks can do is print money, print and print and print money, hand it out to people, give it to banks and use it to buy, to buy various things. So this is going to massively dilute the U.S. dollar. Now, my solution for this is uh, gold and Bitcoin. Gold has been holding very well in here. So my major positions, I've been long the tenure note, which you can approximate using IEF. I've been long the tenure note futures. IEF, TLT are two ways to play that. I think it's a little bit late to get on this train, maybe wait for a pullback, but these can still go much higher if interest rates in the US go to zero uh, or even go negative. So I still, I still like these on the path to zero, uh, zero percent interest rates. I still like gold, and um, I also like, I also like Bitcoin. I've been getting a lot of questions about Bitcoin. It is just uh, <laughs> crashing. Uh, we we were up to above ten thousand just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's just been selling off ever since then. And I think the reason for this is institutional investors and people maybe who bought uh, Bitcoin at higher, at higher levels are beginning to panic and get margin calls. Hedge funds have very strict risk controls. You may have heard of VAR, VAR limits, where if the volatility of something goes up or if they're getting margin calls in other parts of their portfolios, they need to sell Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, a lot of people have said that it's a safe haven at this point. I, it's it hasn't been around long enough to actually function as a safe haven. I think it uh, it actually is a safe haven given the uh, limited supply and that if you have a lot of central bank money printing, I think this is the place you want to be. And I think people really underestimate how much this can go up. So what happened to gold during the uh, great financial crisis is gold itself uh, sold off Let's just do a weekly chart here. Gold itself got dumped along with everything else during the uh, during the actual financial crisis in 2000 um, in 2008 to to, to really the the bottom when uh, or the the bottom of panic when Lehman Brothers uh, filed for bankruptcy in September uh, of of 2008. So we had that initial knee jerk reaction down in gold, and then you can see what happened once. Uh, the Fed revved up QE, quantitative easing, which is basically money printing. Gold just took off uh, and really never looked back. If we, if we scroll out here, we can see the chart of gold. And so, uh, and it actually, it hasn't even gotten back to those, back to those uh, 2011 highs. So I think gold, gold, uh, scarce real estate, like coastal real estate or, or high, high quality metropolitan real estate, and Bitcoin, these sort of limited supply, scarce assets. If you're into fine art, if you can afford a Picasso or a Van Gogh, that's another place to be. Uh, rare cars, uh, maybe Beanie Babies, these these sort of things. But my favorite is really is really Bitcoin, in this environment of money printing. And so, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I think this this sell off is just a gigantic blessing. I'm expecting Bitcoin to be above a hundred thousand and maybe much more by the end of uh, 2021. So that's that's how I'm trading this. Long treasuries, uh, long a lot of cash. I don't have any publicly traded stocks right now. Uh, long gold and long Bitcoin. And I think we really should be prepared for the possibility of, uh, of either a multi-year, a multi-month uh, bear market. And uh, I think the only way that we stop a 40, 50, 60% drawdown in stocks is to really trash all the fiat currencies. We need all the central banks of the world to just start printing uh, this worthless paper money, increasing the supply. And so if you're holding paper money or fiat money, you're basically, uh, it's sort of like picking your pocket and you're, you're not even aware of it because they're printing more of, um, of US dollars or euros or yen or whatever. And that tr decreases the value of each of those individual pieces. And so the, 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 the money, the fiat money no longer serves as a store of value. Not that it really ever did since getting off the gold standard. But I think you have to think about these terms 
you know, the really the only place to avoid um, a uh, uh, having your 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 fiat money or store of value depreciated. The only places to hide are in risky assets like real estate, stocks, and Bitcoin uh, and gold. And so, I th I think given the supply chain, uh, the supply chains seizing up, and just the the knock on economic effects that we're getting that stocks are probably not the place to be uh, over the next year or two, uh, though they normally are a decent place to be to preserve uh, purchasing power, which is why you want to have a lot of stocks in your retirement account for the long term. And again, if you have more than a five-year horizon, uh, you probably should be loading up on stocks here, especially if you have a 20, 30, 40-year horizon. I think you know ultimately the stock market gets much higher, at least in nominal terms. And, and the stock market will eventually be driven back up by more money printing. But I think the best way to benefit from the printing presses revving up is Bitcoin. That combined with the fact that in May of 2020, May of this year, there's going to be a, a programming software inter induced shortage of Bitcoin, which is called the, uh, the halving or the halvening. And this is when Bitcoin miners will be given uh, uh, their, their rewards for mining new Bitcoin will be cut in half. It's going to decrease the supply of Bitcoin. And most of the Bitcoin that's ever going to be mined is out there. We're at something like 18 million out of the 21 million. A lot of that Bitcoin has already been lost. So something to think about uh, how you want to be in scarce assets going into this massive central bank money printing that we're going to be seeing. And I don't see any way around, around money printing. Uh, so we either get... Uh, we either get stocks going down 50% uh, from the highs, and maybe you know during the Great Depression stocks went down like 80 or 90%. I don't think we see anything like that. I think central banks are much more on top of things, and they are just going to rev up the printing presses, and we're going to get a lot of fiscal stimulus. You're going to get checks from the government. You're going to get free money, uh, the sort that Andrew Yang was was offering. And so I think that hedge funds puking out their Bitcoin, getting margin calls at this point is actually uh, actually a blessing. Again, it's a risky asset. It could, it could go to zero. There could be some flaw that we don't know about. Uh, but I think it's, it's been proven to be pretty robust over the last 11 years. So that's how I'm positioned. Long treasuries, long cash, and long Bitcoin. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are, how you're seeing this uh, crisis uh, evolve where you are and definitely uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and um, drop a comment and definitely stay safe out there. I hope all you guys are doing well and I'll see you in the next video.